tuning in to Uncommon, Uncommon Women. Women. I'm Shanira. I'm Kate. And I'm Jenny Lee. And today we're going to be focusing on loving yourself before loving others. So three topics that we're going to focus um, this podcast on this episode is going to be how do you start loving yourself? What are some things you need to get rid of to love yourself? And what is important to focus on before getting in a relationship? So ladies, how do you start loving yourself? Well, by speaking life over yourself, by words, you know, being positive, looking in the mirror and just speaking them words over yourself, um, what your wants and needs are, as well as, you know, take time out, you know, and just and what you deserve and what your desires are. Not only that, just focus on you, have that self-care. Investing in yourself is extremely powerful. Leonardo da, Leonardo da Vinci said himself, one can have no smaller or greater mastery than mastery of oneself. Loving yourself begins with honoring yourself, knowing your needs so you know what the standard is when someone's presenting needs for you. That way you're not searching them for somewhere else. Self-love begins in your own head. It's not only about your appearance or about pleasing others. It's about really investing in you. So take a break from social media. Take a break from others' opinions. Try to invest in yourself. I want to present you with a strategy of loving yourself Um, Start to love one thing about yourself. Once you love one, start to love two and then three. And you'll start to realize how unique you are and really embrace your whole personality. That's good. That's good, Kate. I think spending time with yourself is very important on how to love yourself. You know, start some activities, listen to some music, try some new hobbies, and be consistent in whatever you decide to do as far as some tools on loving yourself. You know, speak life over yourself, not just one day out of the week. We eat several times, well, you should be eating several times to keep yourself not being hungry. So you have to do that with your um, self-esteem as well. You got to keep feeding yourself with the positive things in your life. Also evaluate some of the things that you, you eat as well. Try to have a well-balanced diet. Studies show that example, for example, vitamin B is actually a great way to boost your mood and energy as well. Um, dehydration can cause mood changes. So try to drink a lot of water and be hydrated. An encouraging way to invest in yourself with the power of words is to write some nice things on the mirror about what makes you great. I know a strategy I used when I was a teenager is I wrote a hundred things about myself that I really loved about myself. And that gave me courage to really find out who I was and that my unique flaws and um, freckles on my face really gave me me. And I really fell in love with that. As well as, as, you know, inspire to be better and in your abilities, you know, and not only about be confident in yourself, try to be, you know, like Kay says, you know, we have to speak, you know, we have to write things down or speak life over ourselves as well, you know, just, and not only that, love yourself with no expectations as well as, you know, when Kate was talking about flaws and all of that, that is very important as well. Yeah, be comfortable in your own skin. Be able to go outside without any makeup. Be flawless without makeup. You know, enjoy the rawness of yourself. You got to be able to love yourself before anything. So the next question that I would like to ask you ladies are, what are some things you need to get rid of in order to love yourself? Well, I think you really have to find out what is that big void inside of you. What's causing you not to love yourself? Really uproot the root that is causing you not to love yourself and find out the void of what you're replacing it with. 
I agree. I definitely agree with that. I feel as though you should stop trying to fill a void. Loneliness would not heal a broken heart. And something that you can do to heal a broken heart is letting go of the things that has hurt you in the past. You know, forgive them. Let yourself free with the things that have hurt you in the past. And that will give you more peace into learning to love yourself, not holding grudges on those that hurt you. And you'll be able to come into an agreement of who you are and the greatness that you have upon your life. Yes, I agree with that, with what you're saying. If you don't let go of certain things, these can act as a powerful force in your life. Change is essential to growth and development in a person. So these are certain things that you also have to like, like Shanira said, that you also have to let go because if not only that, you have to forgive yourself as well. I think you have to be willing to feel pain. Feel the pain. Take responsibility for your feelings. Don't just blame it on other people. It's okay for change to happen. It's okay to grow. Um, we should be growing as people. We should be moving on to what's um, better people, more defining our characteristics, really finding what our needs are, and have the intent to grow. Right, right. And also set boundaries for yourself, you know, have standards to avoid certain situations that you've been through in the past, you know, take accountability for those actions that you've put yourself in or those situations that you don't want to go through again that put you in a place that you were feeling hurt. I agree. Um, I had this awesome quote from Rami. It says, your task is not to seek for love but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. So let's focus on first loving ourselves and find out what what be okay with us before we move on to really loving something someone else. That's good. That's good. Yeah, not also that. Take the time to pursue your dreams, your goals. You know, sit down, prioritize, write these things down. What's important when it comes to your health, career, life goals, you know, these things are so important as everything else that when you're learning to love yourself as well, you know, learning to letting go of certain things and also loving yourself. So ladies, what is important to focus on before getting in a relationship? You got to know what your wants and desires are. You got to know what your needs are. I know that... Um, I l need someone who's going to love me the way I love me. I need someone who's going to love me at the same quality that God loves me and my dad loves me. So I have these standards of knowing what I need from a partner in a relationship, a companionship before, um, because I know those things because I found out them within myself. Yes. Uh, the, with me was, is, uh, you must feel content in most areas in your life. That is very important before getting into a relationship you know you gotta have you gotta you gotta feel also confident in yourself and your abilities because these things come into place as well before getting into a relationship with that other person you know as loving yourself that person loving you a lot and you're loving you as well the way you deserve to be loved yeah, and having patience with yourself you gotta learn how to grow patience against yourself before you can actually get in a relationship. I know uh, me personally, I can go zero to 100. So I'm building that relationship with myself to have patience so that I can have patience for someone else when I get in a relationship. I think you can't rush the process of self-identification. Um, you change over time and you're slowly changing, but there's a point of contentment that comes within um and I also think it's important to have stability in your life. You don't want to be the unstable person where you're seeking admiration or um, those things that you're missing in someone else. And then when they're not providing it to you, that's what puts you in the dumps. Yes, Kate. That also, like you were just speaking on, like that also can bring in insecurities and trust issues and things like that. But like you said, like the, we have to just work, focus on certain things. 
and before so, fo focus on these things that we want before and getting into this into in a relationship. It could be a relationship with our our family friends that we just want to rebuild a relationship as well. And honor your choices. You know what choices you make. You have to honor them. Uh, be able to sit back and say, you know, the choices that I am making is that showing value to my life? Is it showing that I love myself? You know, um, the choices that I'm making, is it honoring my parents? Is it honoring the generations to come? You have to take accountability in your, um, in your actions. I agree with that because what happens is the choices you make today is dictating your future generations. How I choose to live my life, role models, how my son's going to live my life. Just like when I look back, how you are shown love is how you're going to give out love. And when you're in a household where you have unusual love or perhaps unhealthy love, um, harsh language is used towards you or you're constantly put down or you're compared to your siblings about how your brother or your sister wore and how you're not or how, you're, how your parents embarrass you in front of other people. Those kind of behaviors as a child is a b writing the blueprint to how you act when you're older and you have to take accountability today that the choices you're making and how they're going to influence your kids and how they view relationship and self-worth and self-love, how you're making choices. If they're constantly seeing men come in and out of your life, how are they supposed? How are women supposed to um, show that when they're older? Or if they see you twerking, a little girl sees you twerking and she's twerking her little bump going up and down, and she thinks it's cute, and you think it's cute. What do you think she's gonna think about herself when she's older? And man's giving her attention for that. So I think honoring yourself and really knowing that is gonna dictate how you how you handle a relationship yes it all boils down to respecting yourself you got to respect yourself before anything we are in a generation where everyone is following each other and people don't have an identity of who they are and it starts with loving yourself everything starts with loving yourself you cannot dish out love if you don't love yourself and you don't know who you are as a person yes i, I completely agree to a point and uh I, and that and I uh with myself being a mother of a teenager uh a 14 year old ch uh, child as that that you know I have to do certain things that are not I have to do certain things right for myself so that my daughter sees that because I have to be that positive role model I can't be sitting there like Kate said trying to twerk and think it's cute and then when my daughter's doing doing it Stuff like this gets passed down to a child. When they see these things, they do it. So I don't want my daughter twerking. I don't twerk. So I really don't want her twerking either. So I want to be that positive role model for my daughter and to be that strong woman that I am where she can see not only that, that all the strong women that are around me, that they see that I'm a strong woman she sees other strong women and we all come together to be that positive role model for, you know, teenagers, period. Yeah, and it boils down to asking yourself the question, am I ready to love someone else? Do I love myself enough to give out the love that I desire? Am I ready to love someone else? So one quote I would like to end on is, what you tell yourself every day will either lift you up or tear you down. Before we go, I want to challenge you, ladies. I want to challenge you to share the love. If you feel that you have an adequate amount of self-love, encourage a friend. Write them a message. Send them a card. Put a post-it note on their desk computer at work for your coworker. If you're struggling within yourself to find self-love, do one of the activities that we talked, one of the strategies. Write on your mirror an encouraging quote how beautiful you are. Um, take a bubble bath, go on a date with yourself. And I want to, to write in the comment section, the activities that you did so we can celebrate with you.
Yes, yes. Thank you so much for joining in and listening to our podcast uh, on loving yourself. So please share, share with your friends, share with your family, leave us comments, any topics that you would like to talk about. Don't be afraid to email us. You can email us at uncommonwomenpodcast at gmail.com. I hope to hear from you guys with your topics and discussions or any questions that you would like us to talk about. Just be open. We are here for you. And our next episode, we're going to be focusing on relationships. So ladies, stay uncommon.